I've discussed in the past the critical role of the ISHRS, the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery, in the field of hair restoration. Unfortunately, there are vast numbers of untrustworthy surgeons and facilities, and if your hair is ruined, it's very difficult to fix. Looking for surgeons that have reached fellow status in the ISHRS is the first important criterion to use when looking for a surgeon. The ISHRS is the world's largest and most respected educational organization when it comes to hair surgery, and each year, one individual is elected its president, and it will navigate challenges and organize the most important meetings in the world. I like to speak with each president during their term to get an update on this important organization, and this year, that person is my good friend, Dr. Ricardo Mejia. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Haber, hair loss expert and hair transplant surgeon from Cleveland, Ohio. Join me and the Hair Transplant Roadshow as I travel the globe seeking answers to important surgical and non-surgical hair loss questions from the true experts in the field. Today, we travel to Florida, where my guest is Dr. Ricardo Mejia. Please support this program by selecting like, subscribe, and requesting notifications when our next episode is available. And feel free to post comments and topic suggestions as well. It's October of 2025. And Ricardo is the president of the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery, the ISHRS, which makes him the world's most influential voice in our field. Each ISHRS president focuses on goals of particular interest to our field, and we'll hear more about that. This will be the first of three episodes with Ricardo addressing a number of important topics in the field of hair loss. Ricardo has reached fellow status in the ISHRS, he is certified by the ABHRS, and he's lectured extensively throughout the world. Ricardo practices in sunny Jupiter, Florida, where he regularly heads out on his fishing boat while I'm shoveling snow here in Cleveland, and there's definitely something wrong about that. You're invited this, all the time. <laughs> I appreciate that. Over the past year as president, Ricardo has literally traveled the world to attend meetings and share his message, and I'm fairly certain no prior ISHRS president has traveled quite so much. I'm pleased that he's taking uh, time from his other responsibilities to be my guest to help discuss what challenges and successes the ISHRS has had this year. Hi, Ricardo. Hello. Good to see you, Bob. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. And uh, I appreciate that uh, nice honor as president. And obviously, the ISHRS is built on a foundation of past presidents, and you being one of them, we appreciate everything that you have done to help build our society where it is today as well. So thank you for your support and contribution. Uh, it, is my, it is my pleasure. You know, we've been trying to put this interview together for literally months, but you're a very, very busy guy. Let's talk about your presidency. Yes. Each president puts his or her stamp on the organization and has particular goals. What was your focus this year, and what do you feel you accomplished? Well, I, I think, you know, if people would remember my presidency by anything and what I would want them to remember is unity. And, you know, if I could create a tagline, it would be the unity president. Now, why unity? Um, I think because our foundation or our, our society was built on this principle. And I spoke to Dow Stow, who was one of the founders of the ISHRS. And in Denver at our last meeting, I told him, hey, you know, my theme is going to be about unity. And he said, what a wonderful idea. I think that's awesome because that's really how the ISHRS was founded. It was about bringing doctors together, uniting doctors, dermatologists, plastic surgeons, other doctors of other specialties who had a passion for hair, who wanted to learn hair and, and expand it. And that was the whole concept of this society, the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgery. It was founded on the pillars of uh, education, research, and collegiality. And part of that collegiality is uniting doctors from around the world to learn to bring their experiences from different parts and to share that knowledge with one another. So my theme of unity was built on, on that whole foundation and bringing it together. And I think it's very important, Bob, especially in uh, today's society because hair restoration is expanding. 
it's expanded from traditional strip surgery, FUT, to now follicular unit excision. And that procedure has really evolved and more people are getting interested in it. More people are doing it. And it's an opportunity to unite doctors from around the world to join our society, to unite with us in one common theme. And that is to do the best for our patients, to do, do the surgery for our patients, and to be united in the principles of education, collegiality, and research, and to share that information together. I think it's 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 worthy, and and that's interesting. You go back to Dow because before Dow started the ISHRS, it was just a everybody did their own thing, and and people kind of hid their hid their techniques. And through the ISHRS, it really brought the whole world together uh, under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. But what what's what's been interesting, I think, is that in the last 30 years, there's been a, a splintering in some ways that now we're so successful that there's so many other organizations, so many other things popping up. And this, that's not a problem. That's a good thing. But it does make it all that more important that we stress the importance of unity, no matter how many organizations there are, no matter how many techniques there are, we're still one global, one concept of we want to make people's heads look better. We want to respect hair. Now, unity, unity certainly is a worthwhile goal. Not all surgeons and organizations share the principles that are followed by the ISHRS. Did you get any resistance in the world as you traveled to the various organizations and, and spoke at meetings? Um, not necessarily, and I'll, and I'll tell you partly why. And you, you, know, you brought up the point about, you know, we've been splinters and these other societies forming and so forth and other groups. And sometimes I, I, I look on the internet and I find groups that's like, I don't even know this group. And they're holding a workshop and they're holding a, this, this educational thing. You know, who are these people? And the point is, you know, we want to make sure that the surgery, follicular unit excision, is a surgery and should be, qual should be performed by, you know, your qualified doctor that knows how to do the surgery, that is going to do the surgery. You know, no different than if you go to a plastic surgeon and say, hey, I want a facelift or I want a breast lift, you know, and then sure, no problem, we'll sign you up and we'll do the procedure and so forth and so forth. But then it's not the doctor doing the surgery, it's somebody else, okay? And I don't think, you know, patients would be appreciated if they went for a facelift or they went for, you know, a breast lift and they realized their doctor didn't do the surgery. It was delegated to uh, one of the medical assistants to do. And it's no different really in hair when you think about it, because this is a, a sometimes even a longer surgical procedure that involves surgical removal of full thickness grafts of hair that have to be carefully removed and placed back into the scalp. So um, we should have that same criteria, you know, for ourselves, which is what we do. The ISHRS believes in uh, doctors doing their own surgery and not delegating. And um, consequently, we're this society that has uphold this high standard. And there are other people in the world and throughout everywhere, even in our backyard, where that's not necessarily the case. It's somebody else doing the surgery, which even in Florida, it's illegal to delegate surgery to um, a person that is not a doctor or a physician assistant or a licensed individual. But to answer your question around the world, all the places that I've been have been doctors who are very passionate about their procedures that are involved with the ISHRS, have that same standard and belief. And so they respect that principle of, you know, I'm gonna do your surgery for you. I'm gonna make sure you get the very best result. So I haven't really run into any significant resistance because most of the places that I've been going to have been surrounded by a lot of the ISHRS doctors that are putting on these meetings around the world. That's good, that's good. That's very good to hear. You know, no matter what, can they, the ISHRS is the global umbrella. So no matter how many societies there are uh, or techniques, we like to encourage everybody to be a member of the ISHRS. There's there's nobody that teaches more than the the ISHRS does, and there's no organization that has spent so much time and effort and money to fight the black market. Everybody right. is affected by the black market. Nobody likes the black market. People talk, but the ISHRS actually puts money where its mouth is and actually does things to try to educate patients and convince doctors that doctors should do the surgery 
don't delegate inappropriately. Correct. And I think, I think, you know, um, it's very difficult to measure the success of our campaign, uh, which was started by Dr. Arthur Tykosinski back in 2019 when he was president. Um, but overall, you know, we have seen a number of people starting to ask, you know, who's going to do my surgery? And that's the key thing. You know, as long as the message is getting around somehow, or it's being communicated in different ways, um, that message is, is getting out there. And I've seen, you know, doctors um, share our resources to all their patient database or their patient um, in their database, you know, about, hey, beware, you know, who's doing your surgery. And they've even shared some of the pictures that we have on our website about, you know, some of the complications from the black market. So the message is getting out there. It's taken some time, but it's certainly getting out there. And it, it, um, go ahead. I was going to say it definitely is because it used to be that patients never asked that question, but yeah. I'm asked that question regularly now, and I love getting that question. So yes. thank you for asking because invariably they've been someplace else and they there was something wrong there, but they couldn't put their finger on it. They're asking that question, which is beautiful. It's a it's a job well done. Yeah, and you know I have some patients that say, so why did you choose me? And it's like, well, because you do your own surgery, you know. And I was like, oh, well, okay, you know. So somehow they're they're getting that that message. Yeah, I think I think. For me, the ISHS, I mean, you know, I've devoted much of my life to this organization sure. uh, and enjoyed everything that I've done with it. In my personal opinion, any hair transplant surgeon who's not a member of the ISHS is announcing that they're not interested in education. To me, that's a great surgeon to avoid. That'd be like a dermatologist not belonging to the American Academy of Dermatology. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to belong to this organization to support it, to learn from it, to become better. And doctors that are not, it's a number one thing that should distinguish a, a doctor that you should consider going to from not is, is membership in the ISHRS. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because that membership signifies a couple things. It doesn't signify just belonging to a, a society. It signifies that you're committed to being a doctor that is learning the latest techniques, that's keeping up with the science and trying to uh, um, trying to always better okay their procedures and every year the most experienced doctors that go to our meeting which this year is going to be in berlin um always say one thing every time i go to a meeting i always learn something new and it doesn't matter you know how many meetings you've gone to how old you are how experienced you are you're always learning a new thing even in, in the last um, uh, workshop that I was at in Uzbekistan, you know, I saw somebody that was using one of the keep systems that we use to help load graphs in a different manner that I have never seen before. Okay? Hmm. And so there's always an opportunity to learn different and, and new techniques. If I come back from a meeting and I've just learned one thing, it might be surgical, it might be a holding solution might be some if I learn one thing, then the meeting has been worthwhile. Every year, I my goal is to be better than I was last year. Yeah, correct. So important. And, you know, getting to the point that you were talking about, you know, if you're not a member of a society. And I think one of the things that you were talking about, this global unity is, you know, our society also has the global council, which are member societies from all over the world that are united with the same principles as the ISHRS. And we've just added um, uh, Spain and we've just added Russia as a new society. And so we have now uh, 25 uh, global council societies and we got more and more that are wanting to join our society. I've got um, uh, doctors from Peru calling me. I've got, you know, other doctors from Chile. I've got other doctors from other parts of, you know, Asia. So every society where the doctors are passionate about this, their local societies want to become part of the ISHRS. Yeah, the places in the world that you would never think has have a busy hair transplant community have a busy hair transplant community. You know, it's it's something that's everywhere, and uh, it's it's a it's an important role that we're playing. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And in just a few weeks, you'll be presiding over what might be the largest hair transplant meeting ever held in Berlin, as you mentioned. Tell me what you're most excited uh, about th this meeting. Well, number one, obviously, anytime I'd love to travel. So number one, just being in a new city that I haven't been to before is always exciting. You know, Berlin is, um, you know, a symbol of unity. The Brandenburg Gate 
in and of itself is unity. And that's why in our logo, we chose the Brandenburg Gate because it, it is a symbol of unity. And um, consequently, it fits perfectly within our theme. But, you know, Berlin is such a wonderful place. But I think the, the thing that I am looking forward to the most is kind of um, our new program that Dr. Sam Lamb, our chairman for this meeting, has kind of worked tirelessly in to make sure that it is filled with, you know, high quality new videos, master classes that really bring a different perspective than hopefully than what we've been doing before. So I'm really excited about this um, new format with what we call the long format, high quality videos that really now show because, you know, sometimes, you know, um, you know a video is worth a thousand words. And especially in meetings where um, we have doctors internationally and they may not understand the language very well, you know, being able to see something is so much more visually better. And the other thing is I'm also excited uh, to be the first time that we're now introducing a multi-language uh, app that can translate um, in real time over 60 different languages. So I'm pretty excited about that so that all of our members across the world that don't speak very good English or understand it very well have the same opportunity as anybody else to get that information so that they can go home with valuable tools and information from the meeting. Yeah, that's a great advantage of the technology and you know, the latest generation of, of ear pods will simultaneously translate, which is just mind boggling. You can go anywhere in the world practically mm -hmm. and have a conversation with someone instead right. of having, you know, dozens of people sitting at the back of the room translating, which is, you know, cumbersome and very, very expensive. This is amazing because it will bring non-native English speakers, again, under that umbrella and learning things that otherwise they would not have been able to learn. Exactly. Uh, which is great. Exactly. And, and this will be a fitting, this, this meeting will be a fitting end to your your year of meetings. How many, how many meetings did you go to this year? Uh, you know, I haven't counted them, but uh, quite a few. I've been uh, I've been bouncing around all over from uh, Uzbekistan, the country of Georgia, uh, Monaco, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, Colombia, uh, Paris, uh, and just other other areas, uh, uh, Malaga, Spain. And uh, after our meeting, we're going to be going to um, um, Bucharest, Romania. The ISHRS is having uh, its first ever repair workshop. This is going to be the first ever uh, workshop focused strictly on repairs. You know, how to repair some of the, the black market bad cases, how to, you know, fix, you know, scars and burns and other issues that, Traditionally, we don't really cover a lot in our standard workshop. So this is going to be the first ever um, re repair workshop in the world. That's that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, every time I tried to set up this interview with you, you were uh, your staff said, no, he's in South America or, right. you know, Europe or God knows where. So I'm fortunate to squeezing this in just before the meeting. Well, yeah, it's, it's, next year it's, it's, you don't have to you don't have to go to every meeting next year. You can you can start working again and try to you know pay your salary. So time to get back to work. <laughs> exactly, Ricardo. We're both very passionate about the ISHRS. Uh, we could talk for hours on this topic, but I think we've covered enough about sure. the ISHRS and your presidency. That's going to bring us uh, to the end of part one. I want to thank you, Ricardo, for getting us updated on the important role of the ISHRS and this exciting meeting that's coming up. So look for part two of my series of interviews with Ricardo Mejia on the Hair Transplant Roadshow. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Ricardo. Thank you, Bob.